Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 uh, packet tracer lab activity. Implement inter VLAN routing. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA project support or CCNA online classes, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now, back to our lab activity. Here we can see the topology. We will design this topology in our Cisco Packet Tracer. And here we can see uh, addressing table and uh, VLAN table. Coming to the objectives, in part 1, build the network and configure basic device settings. In part 2, create VLANs and assign a switch ports. In part 3, configure an 802.1Q trunk between the switches. In part 4, configure inter-VLAN routing on the router. Then finally in part 5, verify inter-VLAN routing is working. Just we will go through the background. Modern switches use virtual local area networks, that is VLANs, to improve network performance by separating large layer 2 broadcast domain into smaller ones. VLANs can also be used as a security measure by separating sensitive data traffic from the rest of the network. In general, VLANs make it easier to design a network to support the goals of an organization. Communication between VLANs requires a device operating at layer 3 of the OSI model. Adding an inter-VLAN inter router allows the organization to segregate and separate broadcast domains while simultaneously allowing them to communicate with each other. VLAN trunks are used to span VLANs across multiple devices. Trunks allow the traffic from multiple VLANs to travel over a single link while keeping the VLAN identification and segmentation intact. A particular kind of inter-VLAN routing, called a router on a stick, uses a trunk from the router to the switch to enable all VLANs to pass to the router. In this lab activity, we will create VLANs on both switches in the topology, assign VLANs to switch access ports, verify that VLANs are working as expected. Create VLAN trunks between the two switches and between S1 and R1. And configure inter-VLAN routing on R1 to allow host in different VLANs to communicate regardless of which subnet the host resides. They given a note here. The routers used with the CCNA hands-on labs are Cisco 4221 with Cisco iOS X0 release 16.9.4. The switches used in the labs are Cisco Catalyst 2960s with the Cisco IOS release 15.2. Other routers, switches and Cisco IOS versions can be used. Depending on the model and Cisco IOS version, the commands available and the output produced might vary from what is shown in the labs. Refer to the router interface summary table at the end of the lab for the correct interface identifiers. Again a note, ensure that the routers and the switches have been erased and have no startup configurations. If you are unsure, contact your instructor. Anyways, we are going to uh, design uh, and implement uh, this lab activity in our Cisco Packet Tracer. So no need to worry about this uh, note. And if you do in real uh, devices, then uh, you should make sure that uh, erased uh, all these uh, start configurations. Otherwise, you can contact your instructor. Coming to the required resources, we required uh, one router, Cisco 4221 with Cisco iOS X release. Then we required two switches, Cisco 2960 series, then two PCs, console cables, and uh, uh, to configure the Cisco IOS devices via the console ports. Anyways, we will uh, configure uh, these uh, devices directly without using console. Then Ethernet cables as uh, shown in the topology. Now, coming to the instructions. In part 1, build the network and configure basic device settings. 
In part 1, we will set up the network topology and configure basic settings on the PC host and switches. So, step 1 cable the network as shown in the topology. Attach the devices as sh shown in the topology diagram and cable as necessary. So, coming to our topology, we are going to design this topology in our Cisco Packet Tracer. Here we can see we required a router, two switches and two PCs. So coming to this design, here we will have this router. We don't have a 4221, instead we will use this 4231. Okay, then coming to a switches, we will use a 2960 series. We required two switches. Then we required two PCs. Coming to entity devices and we will click on a PC. We will press control button from the keyboard so that we can add multiple uh, devices PC A and PC B. Okay, now we will rename these devices physically. As per our topology, here we can see this is R1 and this is S1 and here is S2. This is PC-A and this is PC-B. Now we will connect these devices. Coming to connections, we will choose copper uh, straight through. We will press control and we will select so that we can connect multiple devices. So from R1, we will let choose uh, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1. Then uh, on S1, connect to FS0 slash 5. Then from S1, FS0 slash 1 to this S2, FS0 slash 1. Then uh, from S1, FS0 slash 6 to this PC dash A. And from S2, FS0 slash 18 to this PC dash B. Okay, we designed our uh, topology. Just press escape uh, to get rid of this uh, connectivity, I mean connections. Okay, now we will see what is next. In step 2, configure basic settings for the uh, router. Console into the router and enable privileged exit mode. Then enter configuration mode. Okay, then assign a device uh, name to the router. Okay, we will set this uh, device name, uh, uh, it's called host name, right? So we will go to R1, then we will go to CLI. And here, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? We will give no. Then press enter. Enable ConfT. Uh, we can give in short, uh, configure a terminal uh, in ConfT. Then we will set the host name as R1. Next is uh, disable DNS lookup to prevent the router from attempting to translate incorrectly entered commands as though they were host names. Okay, we will disable DNS lookup. We have to give this command and no IP domain lookup. Then press enter. Assign class as the privileged exec encrypted password. That means we are going to enable secret as class, right? We'll give that command enable secret password is class. Next is assign Cisco as the console password and enable login. Okay, we can do that. We have to go to uh, line console zero. And we will set the password as specified Cisco. Then we will give the login command. Then uh, assign Cisco as the VTY password and enable login. Okay. Just we will exit from this uh, line console. Then we will go to line VTY. We will set password for all the lines. That means from 0 to 15. And we will uh, set the password as Cisco. Then we will give login command. 
then encrypt the plain text passwords okay we have the command service password encryption in global configuration mode so we will exit from this line bty then we will give a service password dash encryption and press enter create a banner that warns anyone accessing the device that unauthorized access is prohibited okay we will set this banner MOTD message of the day right so banner MOTD and we will start with the delimiter any symbol or character can be used then our message we will give a warning right then we will give unauthorized access is strictly prohibited and the message is coming here strictly prohibited then we have to end with the same delimiter it's a double quote press enter then save the running configuration to the startup configuration file uh, also we have to set the clock on the router okay i think better we will set this uh, clock first then we will uh, save the running configuration right okay just we will exit from this and we will see the clock it's a show clock sorry it's a show clock and we can see uh, this uh, clock is incorrect we will set it correctly set okay we will see clock set space we will put a question mark so so that we can see the format how we have to set the time h h colon that means uh, hour we have to set it's a 10 then minutes it's uh, 12 then uh, seconds zero zero then we have to set a day of the month we will give the date it's four space a question mark then we have to specify the month it's uh, june then the year 2020 now we can verify the clock a show clock okay it's set now we will uh, copy running config space startup config and the destination file name uh, startup dash config okay we will uh, save in this uh, default uh, file name so just press enter again okay that's all in step two now we will go to uh, step three configure basic settings for each switch that means s1 as well as s2 uh, assign a device name to the switch we will do that first of all we will do it uh, in this switch s1 yes, we'll go to cli enable conf t we will set the house name as s1 yes, now we will go to s2 yes, cli enable conf t host name we will set as s2 yes, Next is a disable DNS lookup to prevent the router. Uh, it's not a router, right? It's a switch uh, from attempting to translate incorrectly entered commands as though they are uh, host names, right? So we will disable this uh, DNS lookup on both switches S1 as well as S2. Coming to S1, uh, we have the command no IP domain lookup. We will go to S2. CLI no IP domain lookup now we have to set these passwords as in class as the privileged exit encrypted password okay we will do that first coming to S1 we will give the command enable a secret class class is the password press enter now we'll go to S2. Enable secret class. Next is assign Cisco as the console as well as a VTY password and enable login. So first of all, we will assign Cisco as the console password. So we'll go to S1 CLI. 
uh, we have to go to line console 0 then we will set the password as specified in Cisco then we will give a login command then we will go to S2 CLI we have to go to line console 0 we will set the password as Cisco then login command next we have to set this VTY password as Cisco on both switches we will go to S1 we will exit from this line console then we will go to line VTY for all the lines from 0 to 15 0 space 15 then we will set the password as Cisco then login command then coming to S2 exit from this uh, line console then we have to go to uh, line vty sorry it's a line vty uh, 0 to 15 that means all the lines all the 16 lines then password as cisco login next is encrypt the plain text passwords okay we will exit from this uh, vty and we will give a service password encryption same command in s2 cli we have to exit from uh, vty we have a service password dash encryption then create a banner that warns anyone accessing the device that unauthorized access is prohibited okay we will set this banner mrtd message of the day coming to s1 in global configuration mode we have to set to banner MOTD we will start with a delimiter we can use any symbol suppose we will start with the dollar warning unauthorized access is strictly prohibited we have to end with the same uh, delimiter it's a dollar dollar symbol press enter now we will do it in S2. It's a banner MOTD. Then we have to give a delimiter. Warning. Unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. We can give any message, right? Okay. Any message means any uh, informative uh, or useful message uh, like uh, giving a uh, warning uh, so that uh, intruders won't access these uh, switches, right? Okay, now uh, set the clock on the switch. Now set the clock on the switch. Okay, we will do that. First of all, we will go to S1. We will exit from this global configuration mode. Then in privileged exit mode, we will set the clock. We will set the time first 10 20 0, 0. then we have to give the date for June 2020 we can verify it show a clock right then we have to save the running configuration to the startup configuration we will do that in s1 copy uh, we can give in short instead of typing copy running config uh, space startup dash config uh, we can give in short uh, the shortest is r space st so it's better i will give a run space start running config space startup config default file name startup dash config yeah we accept that press enter again now we will do this uh, in s1 uh, sorry in s2 uh, we already done in S1. We will go to S2. We will set the clock first, right? So we will exit from this mode. Clock set time. It's at 10 21 34. Then a date for June at 2020. We can verify it. Show clock. Now we will give a 
copy running config startup config press enter startup dash config okay press enter again great we configured a uh, basic settings on both uh, switches now in step 4 configure PC host refer to the addressing table for PC host address information okay we will configure this uh, PC dash a and PC dash B uh, we will go to our addressing table and we can see their IP address here we can see PC dash a just we will copy this address and here we can see it's set to mask and it's a default gateway we have to set this also so coming to PC dash a desktop IP configuration uh, here is its IP address then it's submit to mask and it's a default gateway it's a 20.1 then coming to PC dash B here we can see its IP address we will copy that and here we can see it's a submit to mask and the default gateway now coming to PC dash B we will go to desktop IP configuration and here we will paste that copied IP address submit to mask now change default C class submit to mask then a default gateway is a 30.1 right that's all in part 1 now we will go to part 2 create VLANs and assign a switch ports in part 2 we will create VLANs as specified in the table above on both switches. We will then assign the VLANs to the appropriate interface and verify our configuration settings. Complete the following task on each switch. Okay we will do that. So first of all in step 1 we will create VLANs on both switches. Create and name the required VLANs on each switch from the table above. Okay coming to our VLAN table here we can see we have to create these VLANs VLAN 10, 20, 30, triple nine and 1000 and we have to give uh, these uh, names for these VLANs so we will configure uh, these uh, VLANs in these uh, switches S1 as well as S2 first of all we will uh, do it in S1 CLI conf t we will create VLAN 10 first then we will give the name as specified its management right then we will create VLAN uh, here no need to exit from this VLAN mode here itself we can create the next VLAN or even we can exit and we can do that just exit then we can create VLAN 20 then we have to give the name as specified its sales then here itself we will create the VLAN no need to exit always we will give a VLAN 30 name is operations then we will create a VLAN 999 this is uh, name is parking underscore a lot next is a VLAN 1000 and uh, name is native Now these same VLANs we have to create in S2 also. So we will go to S2 CLI. Conf T we will create a VLAN 10 first. Name is management. Then VLAN 20. Name is sales. Next is VLAN 30. Its name is operations. Next is VLAN triple nine. Its name is uh, parking underscore lot. Next is VLAN one thousand. Its name is uh, native. Okay, so we created VLANs on both uh, switches S one as well as S two. Now configure the management interface and the default gateway on each switch using the IP address information in the addressing table. Okay, we can do that. We will uh, configure this management interface. 
also it's a default gateway because here we can see uh, device s1 uh, for the interface vlan 10 we have to set this ip address 192.168.10.11 and we can see it's a set to mask and a default gateway the same way for s2 interface vlan 10 and here we can see its ip address and submit to mask default gateway we will do that just i will copy this ip address uh, for this device s1 okay just i will copy it and here we can see uh, it's for the interface vlan 10 here we can see subnet to mask and it's a default gateway we will go to s1 then cli we will exit from this vlan mode then we will go to the interface uh, vlan 10 and here we can see uh, interface vlan 10 changed state to up so no need to give no short command then we will uh, set the ip address we already copied that then we have to give it something to mask it's here now we will exit and then we will set its IP default gateway. Uh, it's a 10.1, just I will paste it and we will edit it. Oh. oh, there is some spelling mistakes. Default gateway. Done. Actually here I am not using any shortcut to complete the incomplete unique command uh, it's because of the request of our viewers uh, because sometimes uh, uh, we go a little faster with the shortcut and uh, uh, they are unable to understand uh, the commands so that's why i am typing uh, all the commands without using the shortcut okay and now uh, we will go to the device s2 and here we can see its ip address just we will copy its ip address and we can see the interface vlan 10 it's to mask and it's a default gateway so we will go to s2 and we will do that we will exit from this vlan mode and here we will give interface vlan 10 and we will set its ip address and we can see interface vlan 10 change state to up presenter and we will set the ip address it's here then it's uh, submit to mask right now we will exit and then we will uh, set its ip default gateway we will paste that address and we will edit it 10.1 next is assign all unused ports on the switch to the parking underscore a lot vlan Configure them for static access mode and administratively deactivate them. Okay, here in this topology, we can see uh, we used uh, these ports in S1, uh, FA0 slash 1, FA0 slash 5, and FA0 slash 6. So we have to shut down all the ports except these three. Then uh, in this uh, switch S2, we used FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 18. So we have to shut down all the ports except these two and clearly they mentioned uh, we have to assign all these unused ports to uh, the vlan parking underscore a lot okay we will do that coming to s1 we will go to uh, those interfaces all the unused uh, ports in this uh, switch s1 so we will give us interface as a range so we'll give fa0 slash 2 because 0 slash 1 already used and we will go till 4 then uh, we used 5 and 6 so we should not add these two then we have to give a comma fa0 slash 7 right till 24 also we have a two uh, gigabit ethernet ports g0 slash 1 till 2 okay so now we will assign these ports to uh, parking lot we can see that uh, par parking lot vlan it's triple uh, nine right okay we will do that we will give a switch port mode as access 
and we will give a switch port access a VLAN triple nine and we have to shut down all these interfaces all these unused uh, ports this is for a security purpose shut down we can verify this configuration and just end it then we will give a show IP interface brief press a space and here we can see all the ports are administratively down except fa0 slash 1 fa0 slash 4 uh, let me see that yes uh, 5 and 6 right not 4 it's a 5 and 6 now we will do this in switch s2 so we will go to uh, those interfaces uh, which are uh, not used interface as a range fa 0 slash 2 because we used to 1 uh, till 17 then 18 we used to connect to this uh, pc dash b then fa 0 slash 19 till 24 also we have a two g uh, gigabit ethernet ports that is g0 slash 1 and 2 and here we can see the command to be given then press enter you will give a switch port a mode as access switch port access vlan triple nine then we have to shut down it okay the given a note the interface or range command is helpful to accomplish this task with a few commands as necessary correct uh, we uh, used the interface as a range so that we can configure multiple interfaces now we will go to step 2 assign vlans to the correct uh, switch interfaces assign used ports to the appropriate vlan specified in the vlan table above and configure them for static access mode then we have to verify that the vlans are assigned to the correct interfaces okay coming to our vlan table here we can see we can see interface assigned vlan 10 on s1 s2 vlan 20 we can see we have to assign uh, fa0 slash 6 on s1 then a VLAN 30 uh, in S2 port is FA0 slash 18. Then uh, this is a triple nine already we have done all the unused ports. So now we have to do only these two. On S1 we have to go to FA0 slash 6. So we will go to S1 and we can see that port FA0 slash 6 which is connecting to PC dash A. That means we are going to uh, assign this network to VLAN uh, 20. So we will go to S1 and we have to go to that interface. That is FA0 slash 6, correct? Conf T interface uh, FA fast Ethernet. We can give FA 0 slash 6. Switch port uh, modus access. Then uh, switch port access, it's a VLAN 20, right? Then we have to go to FA0 slash 18 in S2 and we have to assign to VLAN 30. Uh, coming to S2, we will go to that interface. We will exit from here. Then we will go to the interface FA0 slash 18. Switch port modus access. Switch port access VLAN 30. they told to verify it right so we will verify that uh, we will end and we will give the command show vlan brief and we will verify it here we can see fa 0 slash 1 is in a default vlan because we can see uh, which is uh, 
connecting to S2. So we have to make it as a trunk. Anyways, we will do that later. Then here we can see in S2 uh, we configured FA0 slash 18 and we, uh, we assigned uh, this port to VLAN 30. And we can see all other unused ports are in parking lot. Now coming to S1, we will end and we'll give a show VLAN brief. And here we can see the details. We can see this FS0 slash 1 and FS0 slash 5 are in a default to VLAN because we have to configure as a trunk. And FS0 slash 6 is in VLAN 20. And all other unused ports we are saying to parking lot triple nine. Now we will go to part three. Configure an 802.1Q trunk between the switches. So here we can see that link between S1 and S2. In part three, we will manually configure interface FA0 slash one as a trunk. Step one, manually configure trunk interface FA0 slash one on uh, switch S1 and S2. Configure static trunking on interface FA0 slash 1 for both switches. We will do that. Coming to S1, uh, we have to go to this interface FA0 slash 1 and we have to change its mode. Conf T interface FA0 slash 1 and we will give a switch port mode as a trunk. Just we will end and we will verify it using the show command. Show interface at trunk. And here we can see the mode is on. Status at trunking and we can see native VLAN. Uh, it's in a default to VLAN 1. Actually this uh, another site uh, on S2 FS0 slash 1 also become trunk but it become automatically because uh, uh, in uh, Cisco switches, a uh, DTP uh, is uh, enabled by default. We can verify that. Show uh, it's an interface trunk, right? And here we can see FA0 slash 1 is a trunking status trunking, but we can see the mode is auto. But clear uh, here, they clearly mentioned. We have to configure manually on both switches S1 as well as S2. So this mode should become on. Okay, we can do that. We will go to that interface, conf t interface fa0 slash 1 and we have to give switch port mode as a trunk. Now we can verify it. We will give end, press enter and we will give a show interface trunk we can see now the mode is on not auto next is set the native vlan to uh, 1000 on both switches okay we can do that we will go to s1 and uh, conf t again we will go to interface fa0 slash 1 and uh, we will set the uh, native VLAN. Previously, we have seen that native VLAN is in one by default. So we are going to change that. Uh, it's a switch port trunk native VLAN 1000. And we may get some inconsistency message. Yes, so here we can see that message native VLAN mismatch discovered on FA0 slash 1 uh, 1000 with S2 FA0 slash 1 because the other side the native VLAN is still in default VLAN 1 so we have to change in S2 also we will go to S2 CLI and here also we get that message so we have to restore it conf t we will go to that interface FA0 slash 1 and we have to set uh switch port the trunk native vlan 1000 and here we can see we received the message that port consistency restored 
Next is specify that VLANs 10, 20, 30 and 1000 are allowed to cross the trunk. Okay, so just coming to our S1, we will give the show command uh, end here, show interface uh, trunk and we can verify the allowed VLANs. VLANs allowed and active in management domain 1, 10, 20, 30, triple nine and 1000 but we should allow only 10 20 30 and 1000 uh, we have to uh, remove this one as well as this triple uh, nine okay we will uh, try that so we have to go to that uh, interface conf t uh, we'll go to interface it's afa zero slash one uh, he is the uh, trunking port and here we have to give a switch port uh, let me check with this we will give a trunk then we can uh, set allowed allowed vlan uh, characteristics when interface is in trunking mode okay we will give allowed then we can specify the vlan here okay so we have to add or remove better we can remove uh, one and uh, triple nine right so we will remove uh, we have to give the vlan id we will remove one first then press enter so again we will give this command uh, switch port uh, trunk allowed vlan remove we will remove triple nine also so instead of typing uh, all these uh, commands you can press just up arrow so that you will get the previous command uh, there we have to change only that vlan id from one to triple nine right okay just press enter here now we will end and we will give the command show interface trunk and now here we can see vlans allowed and active in management domain 10 20 30 and 1000 so uh, this is our requirements now we will uh, do it in uh, s2 cli okay now we are in uh, our uh, trunking port interface fs0 slash 1 so here we will give a switch port trunk so we have to give allowed then uh, vlan we can uh, remove right just i will expand this window uh, we want to remove vlan 1 press enter now we can press up arrow from the keyboard so that we can see that previous command we entered here we have to edit only this uh, vlan id it's a uh, triple nine okay now we will end and we will verify it show interface trunk we can see vlans allowed and active in management domain 10 20 30 and 1000 now verify trunking ports the native vlan and allowed vlans across the trunk yes already we done that anyways we we'll let's check that once more uh, show vlan brief so here all this information we have seen now we have to give a show interface a trunk and we have seen a native vlan is in 1000 and we can see a lot of vlans okay all set correctly now coming to step two uh, manually configure s1's trunk interface that is fa0 slash 5 here we can see fa0 slash 5 in s1 which is connecting to this uh, router r1 configure s1's interface fa0 slash 5 with the same trunk parameters as fa0 slash 1 this is the trunk to the router okay we will do that coming to s1 we have to go to that interface right so it's conf t interface uh, it's fa0 slash 5 sorry it's 5 just we'll verify that correct then press enter 
we have to give a switch port mode as a trunk also we have to set a switch port trunk native vlan it's a uh, 1000 also we have to remove the vlan uh, 1 and triple uh, 9 from the allowed vlan management domain okay we can do that switch port trunk we have allowed right allowed vlan we will remove it remove we will remove first one okay then press enter we will expand this window then press apparel and we will remove triple nine parking underscore a lot and then we will verify it end show interface trunk and here we can see uh, okay because maybe we have to configure the other end also oh switch port to mode as a trunk okay the other end configuration means here we can see uh, this link is down from s1 to r1 so we have to activate it so that uh, that trunking works okay save the running configuration to the startup configuration file verify trunking as yes, we already done uh, it's not showing on s1 because we have to activate this interface so what happens if g0 slash 0 slash 1 on r1 is down yes that's why we seen uh, that the trunking is not showing in this s1 so once you bring this interface up uh, we can see that trunking details okay uh, so now we will uh, save it copy running config startup config press enter destination file name yeah it's okay now uh, we will go to part 4 configure inter vlan routing on the uh, router uh, step 1 configure the router activate interface g0/0/1 as necessary on the router okay we will do that coming to r1 cli password is cisco enable password is class so we will go to conf t then we will go to the interface g it's uh, 0 slash 0 slash 1 right and we will give no shutdown command now just we will go to s1 and we will verify trunking again what is the status show interface trunk and we will verify now we can see the ports fs0 slash 5 here and we can see mode is on status uh, trunking and we can see native vlan 1000 also we can see fs0 slash 5 vlan allowed 10 20 30 and 1000 right now configure sub interfaces for each vlan as specified in the ip addressing table all sub interfaces use 802.1q encapsulation Ensure the sub-interface for the native VLAN does not have an IP address assigned. Include a description for each sub-interface. Then finally, we have to verify the sub-interfaces are operational. Okay, we will do that. Coming to our addressing table, we can see the details for each sub-interfaces. G0 slash 0 1.10, 1.20, 1.30 and this is 1.1000 is not required so we will configure these three uh, sub interfaces even we have to configure this 1.1000 uh, as uh, encapsulation dot 1q for native anyway we will do that so we'll go to r1 we will go to cli we will exit from this physical interface then we will give a interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 10 okay then we will set the ip address just i will copy from here now before that we have to do the encapsulation right otherwise it won't assign okay so encapsulation 
dot one q uh, then we have to specify the vlan id it's for a vlan 10 then we will set the ip address we will copy this address 192.168.10.1 and here we can see it's a sum to mask configure that then submit to mask it's here okay we will exit then we will go to the interface g0 slash 0 slash 1.20 then we will give encapsulation dot one q it's for vlan 20 and we will set its ip address we will copy from our addressing table and we can see it's up to mask coming to the sub to mask Okay, now exit and then go to the interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 30. Press enter again. Okay, then we have to give encapsulation dot 1q. This is for VLAN 30, so we have to give the VLAN ID, then its IP address. It's here. Then it's submit to mask. Now we will exit. Oh, here one thing we forgot to set the description for each sub interfaces. Okay, right. So we just we will do that. Uh, we will go to each uh, sub interfaces. Uh, interface G zero slash zero slash 1.10 and we will set a description we will set uh, this is vlan 10 okay now we will go to the interface we can go from here itself g0 slash 0 slash 1.20 description vlan 20 then interface g0 slash 0 slash 1.30 description vlan 30 okay now uh, just we'll exit and then we will go to the interface uh, it's uh, g0 slash 0 slash 1.1000 Okay, we will set the uh, description. It's a VLAN 1000 native. Also, we have to set encapsulation dot one Q uh, VLAN ID. What happened? Let me check that. Yeah, encapsulation dot one q vlan id is 1000 and this is a native so we have to uh, specify make this as native so now we will verify these uh, sub interfaces are operational okay uh, i think we did not set a description for this yeah we set description for this sub interface also okay just we will end and we'll give a show ip interface brief and here we can see all those sub interfaces and its ip address and we can see its status up protocol also up now coming to step two complete the following test from pc a all should be successful you may have to disable the PC firewall for pings to work. Suppose if you are using the real systems, you have to disable uh, this uh, firewall. 
okay ping from pc a to its default gateway we will do that coming to pc a uh, we can see it's a default gateway it's uh, 20.1 so we will go to command prompt and we will ping to that 20.1 it works next is a ping from pc a to pc b uh, we will get the ip address of pc b it's a 30.3 then coming to pc a command prompt here we will ping to pc b and we are waiting for the replies request timed out and then we can see it's working it's due to convergence so once more we can try just press apparel then press enter so that we can see packet sent for received for loss to zero zero percent loss now uh, ping from pc a to s2 so what is the ip address of s2 you will get from our addressing table s2 okay we will uh, ping to s2 waiting for the replies maybe one or two request timed out then we will get the reply yes we can see uh, sent for received to 50 percent loss no worry we will again uh, ping it and we can see send for received for loss to zero zero percent loss now coming to the final step complete the following test from pc p from the command prompt winter on pc b issue the tracer command to the address of pc a so we just copy the ip address of pc a then we will go to pc b we have to go to command prompt and we will give a tracer command tracer to pc a and here we can see the result it goes to it's a default gateway see and we can see trace complete we can see this a uh, 30.1 uh, this is the default gateway for this uh, pc b and uh, then we can see it goes to uh, that pc 20.3 that means uh, to pc a okay dear friends in this video uh, we discussed the lab activity implement inter vlan routing now if you have any doubt any suggestions regarding this lab activity please comment below also if you like our video give a thumb and share with all your friends and also if you like to contact our team uh, you can visit our website link you will get from the description below stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.